Hello, my beautiful craft friends. I am Katia with Lunar Sun Creations, and today we are going to play with some nail foils and polymer clay. So um, I should have probably just bought one of these um, just to make sure that what I wanted to do would work. However, that's not my style. And this is what I did get. <laughs> There's like layers because I am indecisive and I can't decide on just one or two and um, and that ends up with me buying many, 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 many. Um, but that's okay because good news, it works. So I've been playing with them this morning. Um, I've got some light and some dark clay pieces that I've already cut out. These ones are all raw. Down here, I've got some that I've already baked, and right now they are on um, just a little, I've got a little bit of uh, double-sided adhesive down, just one strip here, one strip here, just to kind of keep these from moving around. And I have learned that the secret to getting a really good foil coverage on your clay is this stuff. Decofoil Transfer Dual Gel. Now this is normally used for paper, but it works like a charm for clay as well. I tried a few different things and this seems to give the best results uh, so far. So um, I have already um, painted, just using a paintbrush, I've just painted some of this onto almost all of them. I've kept a few here. These four here don't have anything on them, so I could just show you. So it starts out white, okay, and then you know it's ready when it is clear. So I'm just going to take some and you literally just paint it onto your clay, nothing fancy fancy. I like to go all the way around the very edge of my clay. I have. Um, rolled these out onto a two so they are a little bit thick um, and so I'm going right to the very edge 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 so that you can get the transfer foil everywhere so I'm just going to put this on these last two it does take uh, a little while for it to completely dry and it will dry tacky so that's why I did some of them ahead of time to save on some time Clean your brush afterwards or it will get super goopy. Okay, so let me just get some of the foils and show you what they look like. Let's choose maybe this one. Sure, let's go with this one. They're all gorgeous. Okay, so I'm just going to cut a couple pieces of the foil. It comes with like a a nice long strip like that and they're fairly inexpensive which is why I ended up getting quite a few of them so I'm just gonna cut a few pieces and um, I found that it doesn't seem to matter if it's um, baked or not so I'll put this one down here on one of the baked ones and then I'll put this one on one of the raw ones just so you can see um, a side-by-side -side comparison. Okay, so just using my finger, I'm just going to really give this a good burnish. You could use any kind of tool. This is just the back of my um, very old uh, pokey tool. <laughs> so I like to like get right into the edges as well. Now this piece that I cut, I, I didn't quite uh, cut it big enough so there is a little tiny edge here that's not going to get any foil but we can fix that. Okay and then just grab a little tiny bit of the foil and do a quick rip and look how gorgeous that is! Just going to bring it up so you can see it here. The coverage is quite, oops, the coverage is quite good. All right, and so that can just be resined. Let me just show you what it looks like on the raw clay. And then it's all about the like ripping off a band-aid technique, like oh, whoop. See, and look, you can see 
how clean that came off. There's like no, nothing in the center there. It came off very, very clean. So this stuff works like a charm. All right, I'll bring this one up a little closer you can, so you can see it. See, it's really nice coverage. It gets right to the edge. I'm very impressed with it. So that's going to be baked. Um, I did want to show you that it also worked just great on um, dark clay. Okay, so see how this is all clear now? That means that it's ready to use. So I'm going to take a different pattern. Let's go with... Okay, I'm going to try. This one has some see-through bits, so I think it might look really nice on the black. Let's see. Perfect. All right, those ones turned out excellent. Let me just bring them up to show you here. Look at the coverage on that. It's Gorgeous, gorgeous. Okay, and then rip. Oh, I missed a little bit. Okay, apparently I didn't get very good coverage on this one corner here, so I'm just gonna put a tiny bit more on this edge. Let it dry, and then go over that edge again. And in the meantime, I will do this one. Okay, let's see what we got here. Oh, this one didn't do quite as well. Of course, all the ones that I was doing off camera were working perfectly. <laughs> yeah, I'm just gonna let that dry and uh, then we'll continue. Okay, so say for instance, you didn't get perfect coverage. See, I've got that little blip right there that didn't cover properly. And on this one, I have even more blips. For some reason, it didn't. It's just, you know, it doesn't, oh, it's not, it's not foolproof. <laughs> so there's a few kind of little blips right there. But here's what you can do. So I've cut out two um, of the same shapes out of a thinner, this is uh, at a four. These were at a two on my pasta machine. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to use my little circle cutters. Get a couple different sizes out. And wherever there's one of those little bloops, I'm going to use a circle cutter and cut it out. The, the metal ends definitely work better, just as an FYI. Okay, so there's that. I'm going to do the same with this one over here. Just take out a few of those blips that didn't quite work. But now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take some um, Kato poly paste and I'm going to brush it onto these pieces here, the thinner ones. Okay, and then adhere this piece onto that. So the Kato poly paste will dry clear and then you'll have this like cool texture. If you don't have the Kato Poly Paste, you can also use just a translucent liquid Sculpey. So I'll just do one for comparison sake. Okay, just put a little bit of Sculpey on there. I'm just gonna use my finger to move it around. Okay, and then I'll put this one on here. Okay, and then those can bake. And then you can use these uh, little bits that you've cut out as well on, um, let's just use them on a P2000 
piece of clay uh, that I've just rolled out here, just a scrap piece. And we can put these on. Okay, and you can kind of just press them in. You can just put a piece of paper over top and kind of burnish it. Get them in there. Okay, and then I'm just gonna use the same cutter for the sake of it. Uh, let's find the best spot here. All right, so that looks pretty cool. Okay, so it's been a couple days. I have turned my pieces into actual jewelry. So this is uh, the first set that I made. Um, I have resined the fronts of them on the back. I just did some uh, glossy accents, actually, which seems to work just as nice as the resin. It might not be quite as strong, but I still think it works quite well. Because sometimes I don't want to put my respirator on because it's just so hot in that respirator to use my uh, UV resin. So sometimes I will do glossy accents instead and it still gives a nice gloss finish. I just added a little charm to the top of these ones. And then these are the ones where we cut the holes out and so I filled the holes in with resin first and then did a top coat of glossy accents and they're just uh, black on the back I think they look quite cool I wanted to make sure that I kept some dimensions so I didn't fill it in all the way because I wanted it to look like kind of like I don't know almost alien uh, you know, m like pockmarks on the moon kind of thing. And then this is the necklace where we put the, the holes that we took out of these pieces. Um, so the holes from these pieces into this. And it is a little bit dark. Hopefully it's kind of catching, catching that. It looks quite cool. And then for this one, um, I decided to do a backing with um, some texture and uh, kind of painted it gold. I did a little just very simple clay around the edge just to define it. And then the earrings in that same pattern. And they're not perfect, but I'm still happy with them. This is uh, polymer clay is still a fairly new thing for me, so I'm still learning as I go. So they're not perfect, but um, I think they're getting better. And then these ones, I just uh, did a whole slab of black clay with the nail foils and then cut circles out of it and just made some dangle earrings. And they have a really nice movement to them. So yeah, so I hope that you uh, enjoyed this kind of demonstration, I suppose. And now you know that uh, nail foils can indeed be used with polymer clay. That deco foil really does work quite well. And uh, I hope you will give this a try. I'm definitely going to be giving it a try again. I have so many um, nail foils now so I, I, I want to use them up so I'm definitely going to be doing this again but I think they turned out great so I'm quite pleased with everything so um, yeah I hope you will tune in again I'm going to be trying a lot of new things in the next little while just because I want to <laughs> please give this video a thumbs up it really helps me out and you can also hit that subscribe button, which also helps me. And if you'd like to support this channel further, uh, down below in the description box, there will be a button that says buy me a coffee. So it's just $5 and it's kind of just like a donation button. And it um, will really go far in helping to continue to bring you all kinds of new and fun tutorials. 
All right, have a beautiful day. Love you all. Sending big hugs. Bye.